Uh, today's question from Jesus is, why are you so afraid? But I want to give the story that leads up to that particular question. When Jesus and his disciples are crossing the Sea of Galilee uh, in a boat, and the winds pick up out of nowhere, and, uh, and suddenly they are caught in the midst of a storm. Uh, I don't know if that's ever happened to you. You've been out on a walk or a run, and suddenly the clouds just roll in, and you are caught without recourse in the middle of some inclement weather. Uh, the most poignant time that ever happened to me was when I was, I think I was five, and uh, we lived in a small town in southern Minnesota, and, uh, and uh, I wanted to walk to my best friend's house, who lived kind of on the other side of the block, which probably is like a quarter mile, but it felt like quite the journey for me. And so um, I uh, put uh, one of my action figures in a stroller, and <laughs> and now you know where Silas gets it, um, and, 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 and started making my way down. I don't recall informing my parents that I was gonna do this. Um, it just seemed like a good idea at the time. Um, and so I, I started walk, making my way down there when suddenly the sky is just ripped open and I got completely drenched as I was walking down there, which honestly, as a five-year-old, was pretty awesome. <laughs> it, it, it was pretty fun and I got there and uh, they're like, Do you, why were you in the rain? I wanted to come down here and see my friend. Does your mother know you're here? I don't know. And so then there were there may have been some phone calls and some stern faces and some finger wagging after that. But uh, but but um, it's amazing how uh, a storm can come out of nowhere. And that's just what happened uh, to Jesus and the disciples. Um, see, Jesus had just kind of finished a long teaching preaching session um, at the beach, at the lakeside. He's speaking to a crowd of people sharing all kinds of Jesus the wisdom, you know, that only he can that only he can share. The people are experiencing uh, the truth of Jesus for the first time in this setting. And so um, they're really on the bandwagon. After Jesus finishes, he says, hey disciples, let's go to the other side of the lake. Um, it, the Bible doesn't share Jesus' motivation with us at that exact moment. But I have a pretty strong hunch that he was just tired, that he was just exhausted and needed to rest. Um, I'll share with you that preaching takes a lot out of a guy. <laughs> um, Jenny can tell you, Sunday afternoons are like my, my shutdown time. I like kind of turn off. And if something interrupts that rhythm, like Sunday, church, lunch, Cullen goes into reboot mode. If, if something interrupts that flow, I'm just kind of a mess the rest of the week. <laughs> like I need to, I need to, to, to cycle back up. And, uh, and I suspect that Jesus needed something like that too. Even Jesus, the Son of God, took time to rest, to be alone, and that's an important rhythm for all of us. And so, if you're at the beach, and you have a boat, the quickest way to get away from everybody <laughs> is to get in that boat and go someplace else. And so, um, so Jesus uh, gets everybody out on the boat, and then they shove off. And not long after they're out on the water, on their way to the other side of the lake, out of nowhere, the wind picks up, and the white caps start to form, and they start breaking over the sides of the boat, and the disciples start completely losing their minds. Um, <laughs> and through all of this, Jesus is asleep. Another point of evidence that Jesus was just plain tired, because that's what tired people do, they sleep. Um, in some versions of this, you kind of get the feeling that Jesus is below deck, um, where it's safe from the storm, and maybe he didn't know that all this was happening. Um, in Mark, it says Jesus is in the stern of the boat. So this is a small boat, and Jesus is asleep in the back of it, in the middle of all of everything. <coughs> Just completely zonked out like a toddler in a car seat on a drive to grandma's. Jesus is just gone. And uh, in the midst of this storm, 
And the disciples are struck at how Jesus is sleeping through all this. And they go to wake him up. And they say, Jesus, don't you care if we drown? That's a really interesting question to ask the Son of God. They've seen him do some pretty miraculous stuff. And they don't say, Jesus, will you save us? Jesus, will you do something to get us out of this mess? No. They say, don't you care if we drown? So that's, that's actually not an invitation to save them. That's not an invitation for Jesus to do the Jesus thing. That's an invitation for Jesus to be afraid along with them. They are, they are not content to be afraid without Jesus joining them. Um, but, but honestly, that's not an atypical response to fear. When we don't know what to do with our fear, one of our favorite things to do is to share it. <laughs> to, to, to make it as contagious and widespread as possible. And, and honestly, um, this week of all weeks, I want to I pause and talk about um, the way that fear can be contagious in our culture. I'm sure most of you have heard about the, the shooting that happened in a church um, in Charleston this week and uh, how tragic that event was. And coming out of that, people ask questions, what, what can we do with ourselves in light of that tragic event? And uh, we wonder, in what way should I be afraid? Should I be afraid to come to church? Should I be afraid of people that are different from me? Should I be afraid of you know, everything in the world that could possibly be dangerous, just in a new and more vibrant way of being afraid. But, but honestly, all, all of that is just that contagious part of fear. And it's that contagious part of fear that motivated the shooter in this situation. Fear and hatred aimed at the wrong people. And so uh, we're 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 afraid of uh, we're we're afraid of, of situations around us. We're afraid of situations far away from us with global threats all over the place. Um, watching TV news doesn't help with that. Uh, they, they traffic in fear, um, and so um, so we're stuck in this place where fear is this commodity that some people profit from when they're able to share it better than others. It's something that we need to be aware of uh, today as we talk more about what happens in the storms of life. Because it's in to this storm of fear in our lives and into this storm on this lake a long time ago that Jesus wakes from his slumber and says to the wind itself, Quiet! Be still! Jesus stands in the midst of the waves and says, quiet, be still. Jesus speaks into your life, however it's blowing right now, and says, quiet, be still. It's amazing. It's a miracle. And now I'm done talking about it. <laughs> I do this a lot. Because what next, what's next in the story, I find even more amazing. Jesus turns to his disciples and says, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Jesus phrases it as if it's two questions. But it's really just one question. Faith and fear are intimately connected. When we don't have faith that there is a, a God or a something looking out for us, then fear is much closer to us. I have an image that I'd like to share. Uh, Sarah, the, can you do that thing? All right. I found this on the internet, and I thought it was great. Let's see. Is it coming? 
<laughs> it comes the same. The, Is there, a picture? there should be the thing with the lion. I sent you that. <laughs> and you emailed me back and said it was cool. Okay, I guess we missed it. I saw a gift this week. <laughs> <laughs> which is an animated picture that cycles again and again. And it's a little girl at the zoo staring at a giant male lion. Perhaps you've seen this. It's this little four or five year old girl with glasses on and she's this far from the lion. And uh, you know, doing a typical zoo thing, she's observing. And the lion sees her and says, oh, it's lunch. And the lion goes, and just completely goes at it. And the girl steps back for a moment and goes, I don't got to be scared. And then steps right back into the glass and looks at the lion as he's going completely berserk. <laughs> How is that girl so brave? She has faith in the glass that's protecting her. She doesn't need to be afraid because of the faith that she has. Now, our faith doesn't always protect us from circumstances like that class. Our faith protects us from that fear. Um, faith keeps us specifically from fear being your master. Fear doesn't have to be the principle that guides your decisions. The, you know, it doesn't have to be the rails that you stay in, whether or not you're afraid. When you have faith, then fear isn't what guides you along. It's the one that you have faith in. And the other side of that is that fear itself is not a bad thing. Like, if you are out hiking and see a bear, it's good to be afraid. <laughs> it is appropriate to be afraid. But it's a particular kind of uh, reaction that is involved when you see a bear and are afraid. You are supposed to do something at that moment so that you are not eaten. All right? <laughs> Fear at its best leads to action. Fear at its worst becomes a ball that you keep inside and protect and cherish as it turns into anxiety and depression and so many other things. Fear at its best leads to action. So a fear is a, is, a, is a great place to visit, but don't live there. Okay? So, back to Jesus' question. Why are you so afraid? Jesus is asking that of all of us today. Why are you so afraid? We, we see the news, um, and it strikes us with fear. We encounter situations in our life that are out of control, and they strike us with fear. And we, we look down the road into the future, and we don't understand what the future holds, and so we're gripped with fear. So, two things to leave you with. First, don't let fear be your master. Hold on to faith so that you can let go of that fear. And second, let fear be a call to action. If you're afraid of a circumstance or something around you or something within you, don't sit on it. Don't hang tight to it. Remember that fear demands a response. So do something about it. But not just anything. Do the faithful thing. Um, and one of the most important things that we can do is pray. Some people feel like prayer is not doing anything. Well, actually, prayer is doing the best thing. And so that's what I want to do with you today. Uh, we've got a prayer that's going to be on the screens. And uh, all right, I'd like to invite you to stand with me. As we confess this together and announce this together, as, as we remember the question of Jesus,
Why are you so afraid? Let's respond together in faith to our fear. Pray with me. Jesus, you understand our fear. You have compassion on us. You hold us as we struggle. Even so, you look squarely at each of us and ask, why are you so afraid? We give you our reasons, but we view in light of your greatness. Our reasons for fear seem like such small things. So you ask us again, why are you so afraid? You don't let us rest in a state of fear, feeding anxiety and doubt. We are not satisfied to live like those who have no faith. We use our fears as motivation to act. We use our doubts to seek you with urgency. Help us to stand as living monuments to the fact that you save people. Help us to stand strong for those we love who are captured by fear. Show yourself strong in our lives, in our families, and in our church. Rescue all of us from fear and unleash us from a life that is fearlessly joyful, fearlessly generous, and fearlessly faithful to the love we have found in you. Amen.